ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I have been sent this request numerous times. So if you guys don't know, social media influencer slash personality, her name is Yes Jules, she's from Florida. So basically what went down is that Yes Jules went onto the Easily Offended podcast with Murder Mook, It's Biscuit, and Movie Mad. And so they were talking about, you know, Yes Jules rise in the industry, and she got to talk about Joe Button, how Joe Button basically threw her under the bus because he wanted to bring back a pair of sweatpants that he wore during the photo shoot. And so because she checked him over that, he then lied and said that she got her body done to look like a black woman. No, I didn't. Shout out to Joe Budden for lying on his podcast saying that I bought my ass because I didn't and he knows oh, that. Oh, talk to that sorry nigga. Talk we, to him. Talk sorry we him. never got to go to dinner, Joe. Um, I was a little busy when you were hitting me up. but. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You no, said, I'm gonna, not for real. Oh no, I'm this, is, this is for real. I, is, so here's the thing: I'm pissed off because here's what happened. Wait, when you said Joe, you said dinner, you Joe said dinner. had me on his podcast. He asked me to come on his podcast. I came on the podcast. He was super cool. I fuck with Joe. He was super cool. His team was cool. His team was funny. I might need some look. After that, we ended up. Um, yeah, I might need some too. After that, so I was like, yeah, let him return the sweatpants. So Ron, Ronnie's like, man, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, please, just do it for me. So he's like, let me call you back. Boom, boom, boom. Movie's over. Ronnie calls me back. Jules, my store clerk just sent me a screenshot of a picture of Joe wearing the sweatpants outside his stoop or at his house. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, yo, send it to me. He sends me the picture, Joe's wearing the sweatpants. So now he makes me look crazy because he wore the sweatpants and he was, yeah, I wore them in a picture. I didn't like them. I'm trying to return them. I said, yo, I can't. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or you wore them and then just return them because you got them off the picture. So, yeah. So basically, (laughs) ever since then, we didn't really, like, converse after that, right? Mm -hmm. Um... And I kind of thought he was a clown. So after that, <laughs> after that, he didn't come back. So then, oh shit! I me, fuck with this nigga. I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with you. I know why. I fuck. No, because no, me and Joe is cool. I don't. I, I, we, listen, no, no, hold on, wait, record, wait, 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 like wait, wait. Okay, no, go ahead. I, this ain't for the record. You can say whatever the fuck you want to say. Yeah. Uh, we don't mean him being cool. Me don't. I don't give a fuck. To Joe. I text messaged him and I, I said, yo, so I reached out and I said, listen, I, I feel like I fucked up and I, and I want your opinion on how I should approach this because A, I didn't, t- I personally didn't type it or say it. So I really don't feel like I was offending anybody, but I get why people are offended. How should I approach this? And then I'm, he didn't no, write back. And then Cynthia went on Twitter and was like, fuck this bitch. He has jewels, boom, 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 his girl. So I guess his girl oh, saw oh, that I sense, reached sense, that sense. I had reached out to him, but his girl didn't have a problem with him reaching out to me three times about the sweatpants, but she had a problem with me reaching out to him, asking him for his help, mm. right? So then that's when she went on Twitter and dragged me, and then that's when he decided to go make a whole the Yes Jules debacle podcast for 45 minutes, mm. where he said and claimed that I got surgery because I want to look like a black woman, mm. and that's what he said in his podcast. So from there, that really snowballed the whole narrative of. Yes, Jules wants to be X, Y, Z or is X, Y, Z. So first. So then she was upset and felt like Joe Budden basically threw her under the bus to like the black community. Don't let me start snapping our might on your neck. Should have never let me in. Miami like Cali. All I do is win. Crept through the industry curtain. My feelings are hurting. These artists are starving. They keep us say bloated. They walking around gloated. Their children are loaded. Small royalties aboard the chains. Us from floating, Ooh. never wanted a range or needed nice things. Yeah, just want to see all my mains growing. Yeah, never been one for the fame. Just keep my head down and stay never not working. Yeah, because my ass is fat and my skin ain't black. I'm the vulture that's a <laughs> So basically the backstory is this a few years ago yes Jules retweeted a post with a t-shirt that says niggas lie a lot and she was asking people you know am I allowed to wear this so at that point in time people were not feeling that black Twitter drug her ass and so fast forward to today they found an old podcast and people also found old tweets of yes Jules they started resurfacing again and basically she's going in on black women and talking about how black men you know basically worship her so in one of the tweets she's saying it's guaranteed in any situation I walk into a room with a group of girls black men beeline straight to Jules then she says black girls don't like me because black men do then she says hashtag white thoughts 
damn, why do all these black girls hate me? I've been so nice. Walks out the club with the light-skinned dude. So that's what Yes Jules was saying. So a lot of this old stuff has been resurfacing again. And so she's calling herself going on this podcast trying to defend herself. And Murder Mook, I mean, he was on some straight-up buffoonery. I mean, he was defending her so hard. He was so excited to have her there. And it's like, dude, if you're a host, calm down and act like you've been around celebrities before. Why are you acting so brand new? He's sitting here telling her that she can say the N word. He's telling her that she's black. Okay. Okay, so if this woman is black because supposedly she has Puerto Rican in her and I don't even believe that because I know a lot of white folks who will claim Indian and Puerto Rican just to make themselves seem more ethnic okay so my thing is if she truly thinks she's Latina or she's biracial or racially ambiguous then why was she in the hashtag called white thoughts why was it not Spanish thoughts or biracial thoughts phenotypically yes Jules looks like a white woman to me as a white woman so all that you know she has Puerto Rican her great great grandmother I don't want to hear none of that bullshit phenotypically that's a white woman and for a murder mook to be trying to say it's okay for her to use the n-word it just shows you how some of these black guys especially these black celebrities will go out their way to defend fuckery when it's a woman of another race okay but in the same breath will have no problem tearing down their own women well because they're like why is yes Jules hosting rolling loud they're like, it's a hip hop festival. Oh, why, okay. why isn't it somebody else hosting that? Guess what? Because it's from Miami. I'm a Miami girl and I've been doing hip hop shows in Miami for five years. That's why. You know what I mean? And those are my friends and I help them get artists to perform. I help them get sponsors and I You put in the work. You put yeah, in the work. Yeah, I put in the work. That's why I'm hosting. You know, so people okay. feel that I should not be in certain positions that I'm in in this community or culture Ooh, or you got, get you, you can say their names and shit on here. That's what I'm saying. Um, Scotty Beam, um, Karen Civil. Um, a lot of people feel that I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It should be them instead. But we all do very different things. Me and Karen do not do the same thing. I don't give so a what fuck got about a doing for dinners what? at Louis Vuitton. I don't give a fuck about doing a radio show every single day. My interests are different from Scotty's. My interests are different from theirs, you know? But mm -hmm. I enjoy giving people experiences. I enjoy hosting stuff. So... Anyways. So just to, to ask a clarifying question there, like, do you think that you did anything before that to give them a reason so or yeah, I'm gonna just get, because so, you're... So here I'm going to get... Where are you from? Miami? I'm Puerto Rican and Italian. All right, well, there you have it. Um, <laughs> there you have it. You didn't buy it. She didn't buy yeah. that shit. You didn't buy it, right? Hey, Mystic. I don't know you didn't buy it. Well, then after the interview went viral, um, Scotty Beam and Karen Civil, they both had things to say to Yes Jules. So Scotty Beam says, I have to keep this simple because I have work to do. Everyone knows you slept your way into this industry. Secondly, at Yes Jules, where are you? I'm in Newark. I'm also in Jersey City on Fridays. I'm in the city all the time. Send me your pin now, you and your black friends. Then Karen Civil says, at Yes Jules, I'm not sure if you bumped your head before this interview, but I never spoke on you during Rolling Loud. I could care less what opportunities are given to you because your blessings are not my blessings i've been nothing but cordial to you so then they start going back and forth of course black twitter jumps in there and they basically start dragging yes jewels but the crazy thing is yesterday what happened is that there's a young man in uh, canada he's a canadian singer his name is daniel caesar he basically goes on live. He goes to defend Yes Jules against black folks dragging her and also calls out Joe Budden as well. And then he also talks about a situation where he had with Dave Chappelle where Dave Chappelle basically said that he didn't like his music and he considered him gay. Caesar for the first time. You heard him sing a little bit. Yeah, very gay. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Was that, did I say that out loud? Uh -oh. I'm just kidding. So this entire situation is a hot damn mess. Y'all go ahead and check out what Daniel Caesar had to say. Check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Are there black people in this, in this chat right now? I can't tell. Yo, I know. make sure there is. I love you guys. Yo, you guys are listening and I love you guys so much, but this we're like talking about something serious. So I'm like, I don't wanna talk about shows or like being, you know, like artist stuff. Why, as, I don't know which black people are in here, but I want you guys to talk up right now. Why? Why do we? Oh, I saw it here. I heard something. Why do why? Why are we being so mean to Jules? <laughs> why are we being so mean to white people right now? That's a serious question. Can you pass me the why is it that we're allowed to be disrespectful and rude to everybody else? And when anybody returns any type of energy to us, that's not that's not a quality. I don't want to be treated like I can't take a joke. Mm. I just went through that that the fucking Chappelle shit and I had to like in the moment acknowledge that I was being fucking sensitive 
Sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And that I need to be able to take a joke just like everybody else. That's what it is. People are allowed to say what the fuck they want. And it's I'm allowed to feel how I want, but it's like, am I gonna fight them or am I gonna accept what they have to say and keep it fucking moving? Mm. Why are like this doesn't this is I only treat people that I don't respect and don't think that they can take a joke. I think that they're less than me. Those are the only people that I that I don't fucking say my honest opinion around. Mm. And that's disrespect. White people have, I see what you're saying. White people haven't been to us in the past. I have a, like, what are you going to do about that? Tell me what you're going to do about that. There's no, there's no answer other than gaining understanding and keeping it moving. That's some biblical shit. Yo, bridging the gap, man. You have to bridge the gap. I'm sorry, yo, I'm drunk as fuck right now, okay? But I don't, I don't care. That's not helping. I've seen it. Yo, I've, I've, as, as we are an independent company, Golden Child is an independent company. As an independent company, I, me and, and my dogs, right here, we have the opportunity to empl employ black people. Mm -hmm. we, we put so much money in black people's pockets. But also, we put money in white people's pockets. That's just what it is. Yo, yo, yes, you guys Yo. All I'm saying. You have a pure soul because your goal is love. All, all, I, want, all, I, all I want is love. I'm gonna keep it honest and say what you guys want, but it's like I truly believe in what I'm saying right now. I don't think that being that being sensitive to the point of not letting someone else say what they want around you, and you can be fucking, you can be, you can be offended. That's fine. Tell them that they're a piece of shit. But it's like to not allow people to say what they want doesn't help you. Mm. You have to look, yo. Are we winning right now as a culture, or, or like, are we on top of a society? Mm. We're, we're not and you can't you can't win the game by choosing to not accept the winning team strategy mm. you have to acknowledge your strategy and then build a strategy on top of that that will that will I am look I am black as fuck I slept on a, far, a fucking park bench to get where I am right now I was I, I went through it we don't like like that we don't have in, like that's not being a victim doesn't get you paid. That's all I'm saying. And I just want us all to get paid. Tell me, yeah, yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me to shut up. I believe in what I'm saying. I believe in what I'm saying. And I'm drunk as fuck. And people are freaking out right now. But I'm I'm I'ma say what I say because honestly, it's all rooted. I've said what I said before, and y'all tried to cancel me, and I I I I apologize like a bitch. I don't believe in that shit because I think you guys are wrong and I think I'm right. And so I'm gonna say it. And you can cancel me. I'm gonna put I'm yo, I'm making music right now. I'll put it out. You guys don't have to listen to it. Cancel me. Make me broke. You guys made me rich the last time, and I appreciate you guys for that. Don't listen to my next shit if you think I'm shit. Mm. Don't. I will I will go. It's okay. I'll go back under a rock. It, I don't need this. I believe in what I'm saying case, right now. This, will, this should be case study one. It's just case study one, man. We're make like... I'm, this is so irrational right now, but I don't care. Make me broke. Make me suffer for my opinion. I believe in it. And like, I was seeing... Yo, I, was, I saw that shit. I, honestly, even the like... I'm gonna keep it real. The Joe shit, like... It, like it was, I was mad. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I was mad. The same way I was mad in the room with, 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 but it's like say what you want, bro. I, I believe we all be projecting all the time, mm. and I think that Dave was projecting, and I think that Joe was projecting as well. Mm. Our own securities. That's what we. That's what you can only. It's this is fucking Einstein shit. The theory of relativity. You can only speak about what you, what you, what is relates to you. Mm. All right, so you guys just saw what Daniel Caesar had to say. And I'll be honest, I don't really know Daniel Caesar like that. I've never really listened to his music until yesterday when he went viral. Um, I'll say this. I think the saddest part of this situation, granted, I get where he's coming from, where he feels like, you know, people should be free to express themselves and say what they want to say and, you know, without constantly being attacked. 
I get that, but only to a certain extent. What bothers me with this entire situation from start to finish is how so many black men work so hard to find ways to validate and co-sign, you know what I'm saying, fuckery that some white women perpetuate, okay? This girl is on here basically trying to excuse the fact that she posted a shirt that said the word nigga on it, and she asked could she wear it. And you have murder mook, I mean, just going hard, telling her she can say what she wants to say, she's a nigga, and... You know, all this foolishness. Then you have this square-ass cornball Daniel defending her as well and saying that, you know, black folks need to stop being so angry and stop dragging her and we need to build a bridge. You know, it's just bullshit. Because my thing is, where is the same energy when black women make mistakes? Where is the same energy when black women are disrespected in the media? These same men are quiet. Now, what I find funny about the whole murder mook situation, funny but not surprised, is that some of his old tweets have since surfaced since all that mess. And he was literally tweeting this as recently as like 2011, where he was saying, ain't nothing like drunk white girls first day of college. Then he says, the reason I say that is because drunk black girls get too aggressive and shit and want to fight. Drunk white girls get emotional and want to fuck. Then he goes on to say, when you get on, leave her ass for a white girl. Yeah, I'm leaving her stinking ass for a snow bunny. So again, and that was as recent as 2013. So now does it make sense why he was taken up so much for Yes Jewels and why he was so super excited? That's because he's another one of these dark skinned dudes out here who has an issue with black women. So again, I'm not surprised at all by these tweets. Were they to defend Jess Hilarious? You know, she messed up. She made a mistake. I didn't see Murder Mook send out one tweet defending her. I didn't see Daniel Caesar crying on his IG saying, you know, leave Jessica, leave Jess Hilarious alone. She made a mistake. She's young, da 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 It's like, you know, as long as it's a female of another race, some of these guys will find any way to make excuses for their fuckery. You know, so I thought a lot of what Daniel Caesar was saying was just straight up bullshit. You know, and I just find it sad. Like, now, of course, he's trying to backtrack and say he was drunk. But, you know... When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. So being that you're saying that, you know, you're going to defend her to the high heavens and, you know, I don't need your support. Y'all can stop following me. Y'all can stop buying my music. You ain't got to tell me but once. I didn't even buy your music to start with. Now I'm going to make sure not to buy your music, okay? Because I'm not going to put my money, my time, and my energy into somebody who doesn't respect his own race. You know, instead of these guys holding her accountable, like, you know what? Yes, Jules, I understand you hustling. You doing your thing, mama. But why do you feel the need to knock two black women who are not talking about you who haven't mentioned you on social media now if there's some things going on behind the scenes because there's always stuff that goes on behind the scenes in the industry then that's some behind the scenes industry shit but the fact that these women have never blasted her or talked bad about her in public or throw her under the bus per se then she should have just kept that behind the scene i feel like this whole display especially by the black guys involved in this situation was just sad because again i don't see where they had the same energy neither one of them defended karen civil neither one of them defended scotty beam and Dan Daniel Caesar should have had way more information before he started running his mouth. He was acting like people just started attacking her just on GP. People were checking her for her past racial comments and once again trying to throw black women under the bus. This is the same woman who swears up and down that black women are so jealous of her. And mama, that's not the case, okay? You don't have anything that the average woman does not have. But the sad part is a lot of these guys... Okay, we talked about this, about the whole Joe Budden and since Santana situation where she was saying that black guys treat Spanish girls a lot better. And then old uh, messages of Mal came out where he was just going in on black women and disrespecting black women. And this is why a lot of these women of other ethnicities have the, the arrogance that they have because you do have a lot of black men who gas them up and say, you know, they're the best thing since sliced bread. They're better than black women. They're more attractive. They're less ghetto and whatever else that they, you know, fill their heads up with. So then they end up getting big headed and arrogant and they bring that same attitude you know what I'm saying around black women and that's when sometimes you got to check their ass like I don't give a damn what you know what I'm saying Joe Blow done whispered in your ear but when you get around me you're going to act accordingly because I don't have to be jealous of nobody okay so this entire situation is crazy I'm going to need Daniel Caesar to have a tall glass to shut the fuck up and do better research before he comes out here running his mouth to come protect his little princess when he doesn't even know her backstory and why people were coming for her and I'm going to need Murder Mook to sit all the way down he was doing way too much buck dancing way too much cooning and way too much foolishness on that damn podcast i was disgusted literally the white dude on the podcast he carried himself with more class and tact than the black guy even the white dude was trying to hold her accountable but you got the black guy just like nah 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 you poor weak and you could say the word nigga but you know what's so funny if that was a racially ambiguous man 
If that was a mixed man, a, a, a guy who looked more white, he'd be trying to check him. He'd be the same dark skinned dude trying to check him and tell him he's not black and, and this and that. But it's funny that when the genders are reversed and it's a biracial or racially ambiguous woman, then all these guys will make all types of excuses for why they can use the N-word, for why they can do this and that. But then make that same person a male and all hell would break loose. He would have been in that dude's face like, nah, you not black, B. You not black enough. It's always cool for those type of guys to disrespect biracial and racially ambiguous men. But they uplift their women so hard and go so hard for those same women that they would turn around and trash if it was a male. So I was just really disgusted by the whole display. I'm glad that Karen and Scotty Beam addressed the situation with class. I'm going to need Yes Jules to have a tall glass to shut the fuck up. Ma'am, nobody's jealous of you. Get your bag. Like Karen said says your blessing is your blessing and you know other people's blessings are their blessings do you focus on you and stop worrying about what black women think because for the most part the average black woman does not even know who you are and they're not thinking about you whatsoever so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation once again concerning yes jules and daniel caesar come in with his cape to defend her and then how do you guys feel about how murder mook was acting on that show. I mean, it was just ridiculous. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.